My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for asking. Good morning to you. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. My name is Mark Barato, and I am tuning in from sunny Key West, Florida, as far south as you can go in the U.S. Awesome, awesome, cool. So let's dive into it. Got a question for you. Sure. How old were you when you got into self-development? Um, let me see. It was 2004, and today is happens to also be my birthday, so happy birthday to me. Um, happy birthday, definitely. We're looking at 16 years now. If you had to give a couple of tips to individuals, since you're an entrepreneur, what would be the best way to start or the most optimal place to start when it comes to self-development? Because I think if we're not developing ourselves, I think our income is directly correlated to that. So what would be your suggestion to them since you got a vast amount of experience? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing you need to do is be self-aware on the kind of person that you are. That's the first and foremost. And what I mean by that is you really care about what people think and, and that's your driving force, then that's going to hinder any kind of decisions that you make. So first and foremost, try to really figure out who you are, what makes you tick, and then kind of back out from there, um, understanding some of the other needs that you may have typically if if money is driving you if just success and power is driving you then that's all coming from a place of fear in my opinion and those are the things that i learned throughout my entire life through all the decisions i made the businesses that i bought businesses that i've sold you know they all came from me understanding who i am and really valuing the customer over myself and that doesn't mean being taken advantage of that means really sitting there and listening to what my customer says and then delivering on what my customer wants fantastic so i think listening skills is very important when you become an entrepreneur oh yeah i mean i think it's i think right we all like to talk a lot but i think listening more than talking is definitely a lot more important because if you're in a room if you're in a negotiation if you're hiring if you're firing if you're buying a business selling a business sitting there and listening and sometimes shutting up and letting the other person talk really helps you negotiate with the helping of the person with the development of your business you know it really is an important skill so here's my other question when individuals start in self-development where do you think they need to start because i feel like like a lot of people they're stuck in just youtube videos motivational distance and there's not that much action happening then i feel a lot of people doing a lot of action but they're not listening and they're not using the success principles so if you had to give some advice in how to balance these two set is it more reading books is it more youtube is it more getting a mentor is it just getting a mentor that's not in your field? Is it getting a mentor that is in your field? What are some of the, I feel like there's so many options, but I figured I should ask. Yeah, for me, what really helped was first, getting the, the types of education that's out there, right? If you can't spend any money for a particular seminar or be plugged into a mastermind group, then I would start by listening to podcasts. Right? There's a number of great podcasts from Tony Robbins to Gary Vee to Oprah. I mean, there's so many that are out there that you can start putting that good noise in your head. The second thing is, like what Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, really observe your peer group. Who are the people that you hang out with? It's not about eliminating people in your life, but it's maybe going to a chamber of commerce. Maybe it's going and hanging out in some kind of other free mastermind group where you're surrounded by people that are better than you, but yet you can contribute in that particular field. So it's lessening the noise of the toxicity and increasing the noise of the positivity and then layering on top of that some, um, if you like to read, then it could be books. Me, I like audio books. I like podcasts. So you can do that. You know, some people say, well, listen, Mark, if I'm in a place where there aren't any avenues of people that I can go. There are no mentors that I can reach out to. I try on Instagram or social media, but it's too noisy and they don't want to talk to me. It's like, awesome. Spend a little bit less time with that negative person and a little bit more time with some positive podcasts and books and stuff like that. Start layering that in your head. I agree. With that. I mean, Mark, if someone would say that respond to me, I'd be like, 
what are you bringing to the table? What can he do? So I don't expect someone like Gary V or a big person in real estate. Imagine if 50 people hit them up every week. Literally all their time is going to go and responding to those people. And most of the time we don't know who it is. You might be legit. You might be a good person. You might actually work good in our team. You might actually be having a service that we might need. Or we might have clients that we could refer to you. But how am I supposed to respond to 50 people that want to just get information from me? So well, it's like one of those things that you got to play that. Yeah, those are people that aren't adding any value to you, right? So imagine if you had those 50 people up saying, I want you as my man. That is me wanting to take something from you. Whereas if they spent the time to read your profile, to go through your social media, to understand who you are and say, look, this is what I'm interested in doing. I'm willing on providing you free value by doing this for you. And all I ask in return over time, not even now, maybe a year from now, is just if you could give me little, little bleeps of advice now and again. And you don't have to go and like hit up Tony Robbins or Brock or Oprah. I mean... Like, that's a little too difficult to do. Find people in your genre on social media. They don't have to have a million followers. They can be a smaller group and work your way up as a mentor. Listen, somebody who's doing it and putting in the time and growing a little bit is better than your friend that keeps talking about, hey, I'm going to drop beats in my basement, but, you know, plays video games all day. So take the time to reach out to those people. Like, if someone reaches out to me, I'm happy to help them. Because I'm no Tony Robbins. My inbox isn't full with a million people. But I'm Listen, just for record, it took me 50 tries to get Mark on this podcast. So just for the record, it took me 50 tries. So be persistent. Even if they blow you off the first 49, Mark said yes on the 50 try. I'm messing with yeah. you. <laughs> and it's really a blow off. Sometimes people are busy. You know, like you said, maybe their inbox is filled with I try to do it to you. Maybe that you have a hundred PMs in your inbox a day. I mean, that's exhausting to get through. So just be patient. Sometimes it's just happenstance, and you happen to DM a person just when you're looking at your Instagram at that exact moment, and, you know, and that's a little fate too. Yeah, no, definitely. Listen, the, I, I had one guy that reached out to me, and we wanted to do some collaboration. He sent me an email, and I meant to be so I I read it and I meant to reply to it and get back to it, and other things started happening. It was my fault. Yeah. I shouldn't have opened it unless I was ready to reply. And, but I didn't know what it was inside the email. So I had to open it to read what it was, right? And then I get to it, and I completely forgot. So he messaged me like three weeks later, and he's like, listen, it seems like you must have missed, missed my email. I'm just bumping it back to your inbox. Right. And I was like, that's such a good thing, man. I should try that shit sometimes. Yeah. You know, two weeks goes on, you don't get a reply? Maybe they're not able to reply to you the next day. I understand people are busy, and especially if you're hitting up someone who's working, busy, and you look up to them, that means they're busy. That's why you want to look up to them, right? So it's good to bump it back up on the inbox. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely keep reaching out. Doing it in a way, though, that isn't, isn't overwhelming, right? Like, wow, this person just continues to DM me like crazy. Do it in a way where it's like, I don't know, maybe once a week, um, once every and again, listen, pay attention to that person. See, look on their social media. Maybe they're doing a couple of keynotes. Maybe they're busy in a seminar. Maybe they're away with their family. Like knowing that is half the battle and going like, hey, I see you just got back from a vacation. I'm going to, you don't need to reach back at me now. Maybe a week from now, we can touch base again. I just want to remind you about our, you know, just do it like that. Mark, when are you coming out with the course on how to reach influencers? I'm, I'm announcing it to the audiences. Mark is about to put a course on what to say to influencers. He's going to give you all the scripts. I, I want the scripts, Mark, so I'm just using everybody else as an excuse. So yeah. you're dropping nuggets over here. So Mark is going to teach all of us how to reach out to people, what to say and what not to say. Mark, when is the course coming out? I will get you something by, uh, by the end of the week. Awesome. No, listen, you know, for, for a lot of time, for, for many, many months, I was, I want to call it disabled. I was kind of stuck because I was like, what should I say? What message? How should I approach it? Then I realized by me shooting the bullets and keeping track of my numbers to see which one gave me results, which one didn't give me results, I kind of fine-tuned, I, I realized 
which messages resonate with people and which openings are cool. So I wish somebody would have told me that just pull the trigger. You might get some rejections and objections and it might just go into the black hole and nobody respond. But at least you're doing motion. You're doing activities. So I know a lot of people are stuck at that. Yeah, that's another point that you made earlier is when it comes to self-development, you can't also be like, all right, I'm taking all these notes. I'm reading all these books. I got 20 books under my belt, 10,000 episodes of podcasts, and you still haven't dipped your toe in the water. I'm a little bit on the opposite side. I'm like, give me the ball, point me in the direction. I'm going to start running, and I'm going to figure this out as I go, right? Those are those two types of people. It's nice to have both of those things, but sometimes, you know, you do have to just take that step, take that chance. We live in a society, too, where if you do something, you mess up, and it's not that big of a deal, you say, hey, I messed up. Hey, I'm sorry. You know, it's like when I'm doing a podcast, because I do a weekly podcast down here, and when I'm getting ready to interview somebody, if they're like, oh, but there's birds outside, or you're interviewing me on the, on the road, what can we do? I'm like, you tell the audience, hey, I'm doing Cars are going to go by. Here's my location. People are forgiving when it comes to stuff like that, because you're being open and honest. I think I think you just nailed it. I don't even, would you call it honestly? I'm just thinking, stating the facts. I'm just saying, right. let, the, let the audience be informed of what's going on. I don't even think you need to be honest on the whole, like, maybe it is honesty, but I just think, like, calling it the way it is, if that's what it's called. Yeah, you're just, exactly, exactly. You're letting people know, hey, outside, there's birds outside, there's cars going by. I mean, this is what's going on. And then people are like, oh, now I understand. I can visualize what I'm hearing. And that's that's whole setup. You know, they've been doing that on radio and on TV forever. Even in print, they used to do that all the time, like the setup before the image comes. You're just letting people know. And people appreciate that. Even if the, the audio quality is crappy, they at least know why. Instead of you being like, well, this is a perfect studio setup. And I mean, then people are like, this is. I agree with you. I like it. I think in, people in Florida keep it real more than people in other places. I'm from New York, so props to New York. So I keep it real, real because I'm from New York. Awesome, awesome. Love it. So here's my other question. You mentioned that you grab the ball and somebody points you to the direction you go. But Mark, that's a scary shit. How do you, how do you overcome? Because I know the fear is there. How do you overcome that fear and you take action? Well, you know what's scarier than that is looking in your mirror and seeing regret. That's a lot scarier. And having year after year after year go by and you say that you want to do this thing and you've never done it. And then you start making excuses on why you didn't do it because it feels painful every time you think about doing it. So it's like you just take a tiny step. People like me, it's easy to go jump off the cliff and I jump. Other people, you're right. It's difficult to do. So you chunk it down into small things, right? People will say like, all right, I'm going to go on vacation. Me and you, we're going to go on vacation together. Like, perfect. When are we showing up at the airport? And where are we sitting? And what time are we get to the hotel? Other people in their minds, they think like, I got to pack. I got to get the right suitcase. How many socks do I need? How much underwear? Oh, I need more toothpaste. And that becomes overwhelming. So just chunk it down and go, all right, I want to start my own podcast as an example. Well, should I research about all this equipment and should I do all these things? And I'll forget it. I'm not going to do it. Or just start. Record for yourself. Put, leave it on your phone. Don't even put it out. Just start the process. And once you start doing it, like exercise, right? The first day you're like, all right, I'm back pressing 200. You get it there and you can't even move the bar. And then all of a sudden you're like, cool, I'm going for one rep. And I'm going for 10, then 20. And then let me add weight and keep going from there. It makes it, makes it easier and you get momentum. And momentum is power because you start the ball rolling in that direction. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think uh, once you are in, and, 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 and you're right about podcasts, and even when we started doing our live sessions on our channel, we didn't have it all together. So we just did it and we fine-tuned it, we found out what it was. And now that I look back, I'm like, wow, we made this thing way too complicated at the beginning when we started. It was much easier like today is very simple it's like organic you know when we're doing this when we're doing that when i'm messaging like it's 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 flu it doesn't feel like work it's not overwhelming where at the beginning it was and right. i think we we're just tackling it 
And I know where our mistake was. Our mistake was we wanted to make it so good comparing to the other people that were two, three, four, five, ten years ahead of us, and we hadn't gone through those learning curves ourselves. You know, somebody else has gone through it. We haven't gone through it. Even though somebody else might give you advice, you still need to go through it. So I felt like we were making it a bigger deal than it was. It's yeah. like, let's just, let's just do it. You know, sometimes at the beginning, we couldn't get the video. We couldn't download. Like a lot of shit went wrong. But it was just us not panicking. And we're like, okay. I told the person, listen, you couldn't save this shit. We just yeah. got to do one more. That's it. And they're like, cool. So that's how we did it. You know, so... To me, it's like, you got to start taking actions. And I agree 100% with you. Baby steps, you will pick up momentum. But here's my other question. Let's say your podcast has got 1,000 downloads. Somebody else is your best friend. He's got 50,000 downloads. How do you keep yourself from comparing? How do you stop that? Because you got to compare because you strive to be there. You want to have a target. So this is my goal. This is what I want to get. Just like him, I want to have this and go beyond. But then how do you not stress yourself that you're at 1,000 and there are 50,000? Well, you can't go on those metrics all the time, or then you're going to be comparing yourself to like people forever. I want them. I, I want more Instagram followers. And then I keep going to The Rock's uh, Instagram account. And I'm like, Jesus, this guy's got like half of America following him. It's crazy. But you can't do that. What you have to do, first of all, if your friend has the exact same podcast as you, you should like partner up. But if it's a completely different podcast, like if you have a podcast that has more followers than mine, more downloads than me, and you and I are friends, the first thing I need to do is do this. And I need to praise you for what you're doing. Maybe you started at the same time, and maybe mine has 1,000, you have 10,000. Maybe I need to realize that maybe you're better than me. In that particular field maybe i need to start being more authentic because you're not or you are and i'm not you know it, it's really and then why can't i call you why can't i say you have any tips for me because maybe you could bring me from a thousand to four thousand really quick because of the fact that i'm listening to you so you cannot just always get hung up on that that number like here's a perfect example my podcast is interviewing people in key west i'm never gonna have Joe Rogan numbers because, and the people that even like my podcast, they maybe not want to listen to all the episodes. Maybe they want to listen to one or two that's relative to them coming here on vacation or seeing people down here, but I'm okay with that because my goal isn't to have serious give me or whoever give me a hundred million to be with them. My goal is guess it's what? Spotify. It's Spotify. Spotify. Sorry. In my, in my community down here, my presence is strong right? We have 40,000 people that live in Key West and millions that come and visit. But my presence is strong here as a micro influencer here in Key West. Well, listen, Mark, your good looks definitely helps too. You know what I'm saying? Your good looks definitely helps too. So <laughs> <laughs> killing it. So out of those 40,000 people that live, live over there, 39,900 of them know who you are? Exactly. Yeah. No, the opposite. Just 10. Just 10 people know who I am. But <laughs> my secret to that, my secret to that is this. You can, you could be, if you live in a small community or you live in New York City and you want to do a meet in New York City and say it's going to be like, you know, Upper East Siders or whatever, start there. Work your influence in that group. And you know how you do that? <laughs> You go out and you meet everybody in your neighborhood. You do hand-to-hand -hand combat. You talk to them. You understand them. You start to go out and embrace the people that are there. I'm telling you, if you live in a small neighborhood or a big neighborhood like New York City, and you have now befriended people all in the neighborhood, all with the desire to bring them value and say, hey, your Joe, Joe has a deli. Let me give you more customers by talking about you, by helping you out. Guess what? There's a little thing that happens when you do good by others. Things happen to you. It may not be right away, but it's going to happen in the future. And as long as you keep your eye on that prize of being patient and adding value, it's going to come around for sure. Oh, I 100%. I Listen, I'm a big believer that as a human race, when we're born, 
we have this ability to know what's right and wrong. We know that. Yeah. That ability is it. Now, you may not know the technical stuff. I show you two computers, two laptops. You may not know which one is it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your human conversation and interaction with other human beings. You know what's right and what's wrong. You know what's good and what's bad. As a human being, we kind of know that, right? So it's like one of those, like my my, my wife always said, like she knows people's intention. I'm like, how do you know? This The guy was talking about business. You have no experience in it. She goes, just the way he was talking about it, it was just, you know, you feel it. So if you do good by people, they're going to know they have the capability within them internally to know that your mission and vision is on the right track. And they're yeah. going to come around. And it may not be the Delhi guy. It might be the Delhi guy's son's yeah. friend at school that's going to come help you five years down the line. That's it's what so, I think. It's so true. And, and here's the follow-up to that. Is it when you're helping people, it makes you feel good. You know, I don't want to be all corny and, and all woo-woo over here. But this is the thing. When, when someone is down and someone needs your help and you help them, you get, if you do it without the intention of like, all right, I can't wait to use that favor that they owe me. When you do it like, hey man, I helped this person. Then having those intentions, you really walk out of that feeling good. And here's the best part about it is, if that person never helps you, you can't be mad about it because the reason you didn't do it is to get something. It's called... It's, there's three different levels of relationships. There's level one, level two, and level three. And this could be with friends or it could be with a loved one. Let's use a loved one for example. Level one is, what are you going to do for me? What are you going to do for me? You're going to buy me things. You're going to take me out. You're going to call me. You're going to tell me I'm good looking. What are you doing for me? I'm not going to do nothing for you. I want something for me. Level two is like horse trading, which is, okay, I'm only going to tell you you're pretty if you tell me. If you leave a mess, I'm leaving a mess. If you clean up, I'll clean up. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. Most people play at level two. A level three relationship is when you say, you know what? This person needs me. This person over here, I have the ability to help them and do these things to make them better. And in doing so, man, I feel great about it. And the secret to that is a lot of times you'll go, yeah, but if I keep doing these things for that person, they're going to take advantage of me. But the taking advantage of you is if someone needs your help and you're putting yourself on a list to help them and expecting nothing in return, then you're winning and then they're winning. Now, if it goes to they're playing at level one and you're playing at a level three, well, the relationship is over. You'll start to know that. You'll start to realize they're a taker. I'm a giver. I don't really want a relationship. But when you found the right partner, like for my wife and I, when we were when we first got together and then we got married, it was like level two all the time. My wife grew up. She was a little sloppy. She'd leave things all over the floor. And I'm like, you know, why can't you pick this stuff up? And because I felt if I pick this up all the time, well, she's going to leave more of a mess. And then I'm going to be stuck cleaning up all the time. But the minute I said, you know, I'm going to clean up because I love her and I want to help her and I'm going to do this to make her life better and easier. That's what miraculously happened. She started cleaning up more. She started doing things more because she wanted to do the same for me. And that's how you build a stronger relationship in business with your spouse, with your loved one, whatever. Love it. I love that a relationship that is more like democracy. My relationship is more dictatorship. Dog. She says I do. That's it. So I don't know about that. <laughs> I love it, bro. I'm messing with you. Listen, when you find the right one, you don't give a shit what you gotta do. So yeah. I was telling I was telling my mother in law the other day, I was like, listen, I give my heart to her. Your daughter has my heart. It's right there. What do you want to do with it? Yeah. It's it's in your hand. So I think it's giving that mutual respect and mutual love without expecting anything in return. Yeah. And you'd be surprised what happens. Now, I also understand, Mark, that a lot of individuals are hesitant in doing the level three because maybe in the past they have done it. The 
the respond wasn't favorable. So you bring that historical vision into it. You're like, well, with this girlfriend or with this business partner or with this transaction, I did it and it didn't go well for me. So I'm not just going to do it again anymore. So I feel like sometimes we got to say that this person didn't understand it or wasn't mutually understanding that we should help each other. So it's okay. But I'm not going to judge this new person because this new person is not that person. Yeah. It's the same thing with business. Think about it from a business standpoint that it's like, okay, we're having this live talk right here. And I'm not expecting, oh my God, I'm going to siphon followers from you. I'm not expecting that at all. If I lose followers from doing this, I could care less. I'm doing this because you asked me to do this and I help you and your audience. That's it. That's the only reason. Three relationships right now. now. If you post this and a million things, and you become a gazillionaire because of it, and never give me anything, I never do anything. Well, then was I really at a level three? No, I was really at a level two, hiding behind the guys of a three. That's why I got disappointed. I can care less. I want to help you. That's why I'm here. That's a level three. And listen, people know that. Listen, people know that if you're doing it, because I've done live sessions where it was so funny. I got a message from someone the other day. And, and, and he asked, you know, I don't know what the reason was, but he asked, who's your followers? You know, how much views do you get this, this? And I said, listen, I don't give a shit who my followers are. I don't give a shit how much view. I don't give a shit who's watching you, who's not watching you. I feel good because we're putting good content out there. Yeah. Whoever wants to take advantage of it, more power to you. Right. If this is not the channel for you, I don't mind. I said, we do not monitor any of those numbers. So let me know. When you want to come back and you don't give a shit about those numbers, right. and we'll do a live session. Right. And I just left it at I said, you haven't even watched my channel for a week, and you're asking me that? Like, that, is that the question? Like, you should be asking how we're going to put good content. How right. can we make our live session be more better? And you're asking for that. And I know why you're asking, because you want to get something out of it. All I ask for 15, 20 minutes of your time based on your schedule. Right. So I didn't say cut your business, cut your work, this, this, come and do this. And I don't approach big time people either. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching people that are just like myself. Yeah. They want to put good content out there. That's it. So if you were a big time Oprah, I would say if Oprah people come and say, well, Bae, who's your audience? This, this is going to be worth our time. Tony Robbins says, Hey man, what are you going to do for me? That, okay. I might understand that, but we're just two normal people putting good content, man. Yeah. You never know. It might help one person. One. That's it. It's worth it then. It's totally worth it just by helping one person. Because we did our job. We did our job by coming together, having a cool conversation, like two friends having a conversation, and added value to that one person. But what's the spiral that happens from that one person? We don't know. Maybe they and then now, all of a sudden, they start a business and a super successful business. And not we get anything their employees change because they change. I mean, you just never we'll know. We'll have a better society. We'll have a better country. We'll have a better community. It will have domino effects for the rest of our lives. For so sure. it's like, it's like put good stuff out there. And that's what I told, I was telling one of my friends today. I said, listen, if you want to be successful, and I'm going to put that in my book. And I'm going to say, listen, if you want to be successful in entrepreneurship, the minute that you're working for money or you do the business for the money, that's the day that I don't think the success is going to be easy for you. Right. I said, he wants to get into real estate. I said, listen, go get a job. He said, oh, I got a job. I said, continue doing that and do real estate. And as long as you stay in the game for a long period of time, you're going to win. A lot of people come in with mortgages, this, that, all that stuff into the marketplace. And if they don't make money, they're going to exit, go do other stuff. I said, you don't want to be doing it for the money. You want to be doing it because you love doing it and you think you're going to be good at it. So get a job, make your money, live below your means, save up that money for marketing this, this, but try to hang in there for a long period of time. As long as you don't quit and you don't exit that industry, you're bound to be successful. Right. So you just want to prolong this process. And he goes, yeah, because I was thinking going full time. I said, no, you're not making money because if you go full time, now you're desperate for money that's going to come from selling homes. I said, no, you can't do that. You can't play that game yet. Wait, build up the muscle game first, build up the infrastructure, 
Then go little by little. So what? You sell two homes an entire year. But guess what? You didn't quit. You're still in the game and you learn. Yeah. Because a lot of people come in, they get their license, they quit within the first year. So they just wasted one year. So don't be like one of those guys. Yeah, why don't you put out some quality content of your journey along the way too? Because then you're documenting it. You can go back and look at it. You can educate people coming up through the game. I mean, your analogy is perfect. It's like if you want to be a black belt and you go there day one, it's like now it's day two. You're like, bro, where's my belt? And you're like, uh, you know, it's 10 years away. You got to put in the time, man. And that's the secret for me is as I got older, started to realize like when I was younger I was like okay there's this mountain and there's this huge boulder there and it's like I'm gonna take this in and I'm gonna poke at this boulder until I get through I don't care I, there's nothing gonna stop me then I got older and got wiser I'm like wait a minute maybe I could just walk around it I don't need to sit there and try to bulldoze through something maybe it's a huge mountain and it's not a mountain that I should be trying to go through maybe I should put my attention toward something that I can penetrate. Still, it's up here, right? It's not like I'm just shooting for the, for the waist. I'm still shooting high, but be, be self-aware enough to know that this is an achievable task that I can go and do. And listen to people, not negative people, just listen to your customer because you may need to make adjustments because maybe your friend's product is a thousand times better than you and you're doing everything the same. Maybe your product isn't as good, but like no one's gonna know. Your gut's gonna know, the people close to you are gonna know, and your customer's gonna know. And you know, you really need to keep pushing until you figure that out. Love it. Mark, how do people find you, brother? You could just go to uh, Backyard West. That's my Instagram handle. You can go to my Facebook, same thing. Twitter is Backyards of KW. And then just backyards of keywest.com where you can find my podcast and all that kind of stuff. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning, this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. Definitely stay safe out there in Florida. You got it, my man. And listen, hit me up if you ever need anything. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, brother. Talk to you soon. Got it. Peace, brother.